So hello and welcome, my name is Ruth Otuela from Curval.com and today is time for another DAX Fridays. If you don't know what DAX Fridays is, it's basically every Friday we go through a new DAX function so you will learn them together with me. And today's DAX function is dates between. So this is a very very useful DAX function and I cannot believe that I haven't done it yet. But the dates between allows you to calculate things, you know, like sales, customers and all that stuff between two dates that you specify. You specify a start date, you specify an end date, and then you can calculate anything between those dates. Very, very useful. We are going to see that dates between can do the same thing as dates in period. But again, the difference is that you can start specify a start date and an end date. We will talk about more of that in the video. So without any more delay, let's start. Okay, so here we are in Power BI and we are using the North Wind data set that we always use. If you're new to the channel, here's a link on how to get this source. But uh, we have, um, this is a normal data set, we have customers, we have orders, uh, we have a calendar for our time intelligence functions. And what we're going to talk about today is date, dates between. Let's look at what Microsoft says about dates between. It says returns a table that contains a column of dates that begins the start date and continues until the end date. Useful, right? Uh, we see. So you have uh, a range of dates. So this is a reference to your calendar date. So you have continuous dates. And then you have as a start date, you need to have an expression. You cannot just write a date. It won't work. Um, but you can hardcore dates. I'm going to show you how to do that. It says here, if a start date is blank, then it will return the earliest value in the date column. And if it is uh, uh, the end date is blank, it will return the latest value. So what else, what else, what else? It says, uh, yeah, the dates are inclusive. So if you write the uh, 1st of May 2018, that day is included also. And the same for end date. And it's not supporting the required. Okay. So let's see this thing in action in Power BI. So what I have here in this little table, I have year, month, and I have the total sales. The total sales is just the sum of sales, nothing weird. And um, let's say scenario one, we want to calculate, we have, we run a campaign, an advertisement campaign from the 1st of April to mid May, 15th of May. And we want to know the sales that that campaign generated. And we have the exact dates. We know the exact dates. So what you can do, is create the new measure. We call it sales campaign, for example, and then calculate the total sales, of course. And now we can use dates between this. Between you specify the first date and the last date, and you need to have first, let's write it, dates between, you need to have first a continuous date which comes from our calendar, custom calendar. And now the start date. Um, again, you can hard code this using the function date. So date, you specify a year, you specify a month and a day, and it will give you a date. So this is for 1998. So we said 1998, April 1st. And do you see that red thing? And you see, it's not going to let me, oh, yeah, it, it does. Oh, maybe it's working now. Okay, let's try 1998, uh, we said mid-May, like 15th of May. And then we close dates between, and now we close calculate, and it says two arguments were passed to the date function. This is something that is driving me nuts. And it has to do with the original settings. And no matter what I select, it just changes. It changes to Sweden, Swedish, or English, Sweden, or, or I, I don't know. I don't know what it's doing, but it's, it's driving me completely nuts. Look at this, what you need to do. The function is well written. It's just that it, I don't know, it's taking these as 1998 point 
4.1 and it says, what is that? I don't know what that is. So it's taking the commas as a decimal is absolutely not. So you need to have a blank in there and the same for month and then it will work. And here is exactly the same thing. Uh, I have to report this. I haven't done it yet, um, but, but it's so annoying and it happens with all kinds of functions. I'm going to show you later on the scenario too. But let's focus on dates. Uh, so if it happens to you, now you know how to fix it. So dates between, again, you have what you want to calculate, which is the total sales, and then the dates, the start date and the end date. Enter, and now it will work. And then we have sales of, how much was it? 142,000. Now, always, 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 check your measures, make sure that they deliver what you think they deliver. You never know. Just make sure if you have a complex model, you never know where you show up. So let's verify that our sales are what they are. Let's put um, date and sales. And then we're going to choose, we said April 1998 to May 15. April, please. I, maybe I didn't check the 1st of April. Okay, and here you have it, 142,132, uh, which is basically the same as this if we just... Look at this, I mean, it's so weird. I get all kinds of weird stuff. You see value decimals, zero, and I have two. Okay, no, it's, it's just not. Anyhow, dates between. So now we have how much sales our campaign delivered to us from the 1st of April to mid-May. And as you can see, it's working beautifully. And you can say, Ruth, I don't want to hard code my measures. I actually want to have intervals that I define myself dynamically. It's like, okay. No problem. Let's say you want to have sales from the last two months, from today to, you know, two months back, whatever that is. The last day we have in our calendar, let's look at that. Last day. So we have last date, and then we put our date column just to see what is the last date that we have available for sales. Because the calendar and the sales tables are synced. So. The 5th, no, the 6th of May is the last time we got a sale. It, it, it is synced, believe me. Um, so we want to go two months back. And to go two months back, we already gone through this. There is a super useful function that allows you to go back in time, how, you know, the dates that you want. And we are going to have last date minus two months. And for that, you use date add. So date add, again, you need your continuous dates and then you say, but this is the last day. So we want to have the last date on our calendar. And then we want to go back, no, we said two months. Look what's happening again. So annoying. And this is because he's thinking that this is a decimal. So now it's working again. And this is going to give us what date it was two months back. So here you have it. And now we have the uh, start date, which is this one. And then we have the last date, which is this one. And then we can create our new uh, measure which is dates between two dates. Calculate the sales as always, and now dates between. And now we have 
you know, the continuous dates from our calendar. And then the start date is going to be our last date minus two months. And the first day is going to be last day. Now, of course, you can write these. You don't need to create these two uh, expressions separately. You can just write it here. I just wanted to show you step by step how and, you know, just so you can see and verify that everything works. When you have that, you can just replace these with the actual uh, function. So we have here dates between two dates. So how what was the sales two months back? So from the last day of the calendar, two months back. It says here that it was. Oh, please. So annoying. OK, 235,000. So let's check that out. We said 1st of April. No, it was March 6th. And then we have it. So it works beautifully. And now you're probably going to tell me, Ruth, there is a date in period function that acts exactly that, which is true. It's absolutely true. If you use dates in function, dates in period function, you can actually specify a last date and then you can roll it back. Six months, three months. Hmm. So as you can see, there are actually a lot of ways to do things in the DAX. I don't know if it is more effective to use dates in period or dates between. I haven't actually um, measured that. If you know, just let me know in the comment box. That would be fun to know. But you can use both of them. The thing, the difference between dates between and dates in period is that dates in period, you specify the last date. And then you roll it back. Well, dates in period, dates between, you specified a start date and an end date. Okay. But of course, in some scenarios like this one, it will give you the same results because you're actually specifying the last date and then rolling it back. So what function to use also depends on your DAX abilities. If you're a beginner and you only know about dates between, go for it. So it depends as always. Okay, it's a very useful function, isn't it? So now you know the difference between dates between and dates in period. So dates between allows you to select the start and an end date, while dates in period basically you, you specify a date and then you can backtrack it six months or one month or one year, whatever you need. So this is all for today. I hope you have a fantastic weekend if your weekend starts today. And I will see you again on Monday. They say that we're going to have nice weather in Sweden this weekend. I hope so because it's been freezing cold really. So I hope you enjoyed the weekend. I will definitely do that myself and I will see you again on Monday. So take care. Uh, bye.